Let's now navigate to working capital where the intent is to tie the income statement to the balance sheet through recognizable accounting calculations. We'll start with inventory. The intent here is to accurately calculate monthly movements which are then layered into the balance sheet. As you would expect, total cost of goods sold is being pulled from the income statement. Days and month could be populated by the user. We then calculate COGS per day, and ultimately the KPI, days inventory outstanding. The goal here is to get to net inventory inflow and outflow, and we also offer the option to have inventory additions or inventory write-offs during the forecasting periods. Finally, the monthly movement will be automatically populated on the balance sheet. Now let's quickly review AP, or trade payables, which has a similar format. Again, we see total cost of goods sold from the income statement, but an additional selection that allows us to identify the percent purchased on credit. In a similar fashion to inventory, we enter days in the month, which allows us to calculate days payable outstanding. Days payable outstanding being our forecasting metric adjustable in this view. The goal of our calculation is outstanding creditor payments. Again, we have the option to make adjustments to this value based on our assessment of our forecast, which ultimately culminates in the monthly movement, which again is populated on the balance sheet. Let's wrap up working capital with AR or trade receivables. Because accounts receivable is directly related to total sales, you can see that we're pulling total sales from the income statement. Again, we have the option to select the percentage of sales that are made on credit. Once again, you'll see we leverage days in the month to ultimately calculate day sales outstanding. Our goal of the calculation is outstanding debtor collections. And again, we have the option to make adjustments to that. Finally, the monthly movement is calculated and automatically populated on the balance sheet. Let's make a change and ensure that the monthly movement is flowing through the balance sheet. In this case, in August, my day sales outstanding is 25, but I may want to raise that to 30. In doing so, I've changed the value, and by clicking Save, my expectation is that my monthly movement at negative 650,000 will adjust accordingly. As I expected, my decrease to day sales outstanding has adjusted my monthly movement, and I'll now go tie out that value to the balance sheet. Just to highlight, I'll be looking for my trade receivables account, 1110, and the value, $209,000 in my monthly movement on the balance sheet. I'll now navigate back to the home screen, drop into my financials cluster, and access my balance sheet. I can see in this view, I'm seeing my balance sheet closing balance and adjustments. The account I'm looking for is 1110 trade receivables. And I see that all accounts are being summarized as my closing balance is displayed on this screen. I'm going to expand my closing balance and then look at my monthly movements. And for August, I do see that my 209,000 has been pulled over into the balance sheet. I hope you'll explore the other videos in the NetSuite Sweet Success PBCS Starter Edition series. And thanks very much for watching. Thank you.